I booked a seven-day Western Mediterranean cruise on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. Like any other excited foodie, I immediately jumped online to see what specialty dining options were available. After reviewing the restaurants and dining packages, I decided to try these three, Hooked Seafood, 150 Central Park, and Wonderland. I tried them all, and in today's video, I'm sharing my full review of each restaurant. We're talking price, menu, dress code, atmosphere, which ones are worth the money, and a few helpful tips to help you plan well for your specialty dining experience. Hi everyone, I'm Antoinette, and welcome back to my channel. At Frog and Courage, I like to help you plan well, have fun, and travel the world. So let's get started with a quick overview of the basics of specialty dining. What is specialty dining on a cruise ship? For those who don't know, a specialty dining restaurant is a smaller venue that focuses on a particular cuisine, like sushi, steak, Italian, or American or a food-related experience, like the chef's table, a wine pairing dinner, or on Royal Caribbean, the Taste of Royal, which samples a little bit of each specialty dining restaurant. The difference between a casual dining restaurant and a specialty dining restaurant is the atmosphere, price, and menu. Casual dining is just that, casual. You can pick up as many items as you please. Plus, a lot of the casual eateries on board a cruise ship are included in the cost of your cruise fare. Specialty dining restaurants are usually in a more intimate setting, require a dress code and a reservation, and come at an additional cost over and beyond your cruise fare that you pay in advance. With specialty dining, you'll choose a three, four, or even eight course meal from a prefixed menu. Specialty dining restaurants are on board every cruise ship, but the bigger the ship, the more options you have to choose from. With this in mind, let's talk about the price. You can pay for each restaurant separately or book a dining package. There are 11 complimentary, meaning included in your cruise fare, and 11 specialty restaurants available, with specialty dining dinner prices starting from around $45 per person up into around $120 per adult per restaurant. Lunch and kids menus are often available at a reduced price at specific restaurants. Kids under five years old eat for free. Your ship may have different options, so go to the Royal Caribbean website, search for your ship, scroll down to check out all of the dining venues available, and then click each one to find a sample menu to help make your decision. How much does a Royal Caribbean dinner package cost? It depends on how many times you want to dine at a specialty restaurant. Dining packages range from two to unlimited nights and offer reduced rates for booking all those at once. My tip to plan well for a cruise specialty dining experience is to know that certain restaurants may not be included in the overall dining package, and premium drinks like soda, alcoholic beverages, sweet treats, etc. are not included unless it's explicitly stated so read those descriptions carefully. Royal Caribbean uses dynamic pricing, so the prices may vary based on availability, the size of your ship, the locations you sail to, and whether or not you're at port versus at sea. So the price you see here may be different on your cruise, but booking in advance and checking for special offers can help you save up to 40% off the regular prices. We chose the three-night dining package for $118.24 per person, or $236.48 for the both of us, averaging about $38 per adult per restaurant, which is a good amount of savings. When you book a dining package in advance, you typically make your reservation for the first specialty dining restaurant in your cruise planner account online in advance. When you board the ship, you can visit the specialty dining concierge to book the rest of your dining experiences. In some instances, you may be able to book everything through cruise planner, so just double check based on your sailing. Now that you know what specialty dining is, the price, and how to book it, let's get into the reviews. On the first night, we dined at Hooked Seafood. What is the atmosphere or ambiance like of Hooked Seafood? Well, it's got an East Coast, coastal beach town vibe. Think Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, New England sandy beaches and nautical vibes. You'll see white wooden furniture, blue stripes, overall a relaxed vibe. Located on deck 16, you'll have beautiful views of the sea. The service here was excellent and I enjoyed the friendly, low-key staff. What is the hooked seafood dress code? It's casual. There's no flip-flops or bathing suits or tank tops. It is a seafood beach type restaurant, not a pool party. And so what is the hooked seafood menu? Like I mentioned before, you can view a sample menu online, but the hooked seafood menu is all things seafood, crab, Lobster, oysters, fish, shrimp. You'll choose from starters, a main dish, sides, and desserts. You can choose as many items from each menu as you want. And the portions are hearty, so choose wisely and try not to overstuff yourself. Here's what we ate. Had 
the whole main two pound lobster stuffed with crab topped with a creamy bechamel sauce and grated gruyere cheese. Then it was baked until golden brown and served with whatever sides I wanted. This was incredible. Hun got the captain's platter, a four ounce lobster tail, fresh fish filet, and shrimp grilled to perfection, served with warm melted butter and his choice of side as well. Like I said before, the price may vary, but how much does a hooked seafood experience cost? The price is typically around $49.99 per person. On select nights, lunch is offered at a reduced price, so check for that. But overall, is hooked seafood worth the price? Like, what is my overall review of hooked seafood on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas? Hooked seafood gets a big, big thumb. Definitely a 10 out of 10. And definitely something you want to reserve. It is for all the seafood lovers who want to enjoy a delicious, fresh seafood experience in a casual setting. The atmosphere is great for all ages, the service is amazing, and it's also great for a casual group outing. The next specialty dining restaurant we dined at on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas is Wonderland, imaginative cuisine. What is the atmosphere or ambience like at Wonderland on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas? It's hard to describe, but imagine you've been transported to a whimsy and bright dinner party in the movie Alice in Wonderland. It is a place of opposites. It is grand, encompassing two stories, yet cozy. It is colorful, yet dark and intimate. It is very playful, yet sophisticated. It is whimsy, yet has traditional furniture. It has an eclectic vibe and is one of the most innovative experiences on the entire ship. The service is similar to what you'd find at a Michelin star restaurant, but with a more playful twist. You'll find Wonderland on the Oasis class ships, but on Wonder of the Seas, it is located on deck 11, two decks above Central Park with a view of both the sky and the Central Park balcony rooms. If you're lucky, you may also get a visit from the Alice in Wonderland inspired Mad Hatter himself. So what's the dress code at Wonderland? It is smart casual. You can dress chic in modern clothing and be a little bit adventurous and have fun because Wonderland is all about trying new things and having fun. What is the Wonderland menu on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas? Well, it's a menu where things may not be as they seem. Think in terms of molecular gastronomy. It incorporates science and new techniques in the preparation, transformation, and artistic presentation of the food. So what does that all mean? Well, what it means is to think way outside the box. There is a limited menu and you can only order a selection of two appetizers under the sun, fire, and ice sections. You also get one main dish choice from either the earth or the sea menu, meaning land animals or seafood, followed by the element of dreams, which are your desserts. Because the menu, preparation, and presentation is so out of the box, the waiters really take the time to describe how the chef prepares each dish and they give you insight into what exactly you're eating because without it, um, you may not be able to tell. And that's part of the fun. You can also get a number of specialty cocktails in the Wonderland restaurant. There's a bar on the first level, so if you don't want to eat at Wonderland, you can just sit at the bar and order something whimsy. Here's what we ate. Overall, the price of Wonderland will run you about $59.99 a person. Again, dynamic pricing, yours may vary. My overall review of Wonderland on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, I rate it about an eight out of 10. The experience was really, really fun. In order to even look at our menus, we were given a paintbrush and water and we actually had to paint to see our menu. And that was really a fun way to start off the meal. Wonderland is excellent for those who crave something different, something unique or out of the ordinary. It is fabulous for curious adults who are completely open to new experiences and are willing to try new flavor combinations. It is a very hands-on, interactive experience that is also perfect for onboard celebrations. While we were there, there was a bachelorette party and they were all dressed up with their sashes and they ordered cocktails and were having the best time ever. I would not recommend Wonderland for anyone who doesn't like to play with their food or stray far from the really traditional dining experiences. Overall, I would say try it. The food is good and it's unlike any other dining experience on board. On the last night of our cruise, we dined at 150 Central Park. What is the ambience like at 150 Central Park? 
it has got this exclusive, sophisticated feel. You'll walk through and see gorgeous thick carpets and tall, comfortable cushioned chairs with large floral and green leaf arrangements. Of all three restaurants, 150 Central Park feels the most elevated. It is appropriately located on Deck 8 in Central Park for even more of a trendy date night in the city restaurant vibe. The service here is excellent. What is the dress code at 150 Central Park? It's smart casual. Over all the three, it is the most buttoned up you can get. What is the menu like at 150 Central Park? It is a six to eight course tasting style menu. You can order as much or as little as you'd like. There are starters, entrees, and desserts. And some items are even prepared right at your table. Here's what we ate. The price of 150 Central Park varies due to dynamic pricing, but it can be around $49.99 to $54.99. My overall review of 150 Central Park, I would rate it a 9 out of 10. It is definitely worth a visit. 150 Central Park has such a classy, cool atmosphere. It is so much more intimate and quiet than your main dining or your casual dining experiences. It is a classy date night spot and the food was incredible. At first, I wasn't sure if I wanted to eat at 150 Central Park or go back to Chop's Grill. So if you're debating whether to book 150 Central Park versus Chop's Grill, Feel free to watch my entire Chop Skill review from our time on Enchantment of the Seas, but honestly, I'm kind of torn about which one to choose. My husband prefers Chop's Grill because it's a tried and true steakhouse that doesn't disappoint. However, I like 150 Central Park for the high-end feel and the fact that you get options outside of steak for your mains, even though I love a good steak. But honestly, if I had to spend my money on just one, 150 Park or Chop's Grill, I'd probably choose Chop's Grill. Out of all three restaurants, Hook Seafood, Wonderland, and 150 Central Park, which one was my favorite? Hands down, I would choose Hook Seafood. I enjoyed the coastal casual atmosphere, the friendly service, and the food, whoa! My food was perfectly seasoned in hearty portions and everything we ate was good. If I were to rank all three, I'd say Hook Seafood as the number one spot, then 150 Central Park, followed by Wonderland. And y'all don't get me wrong, all of these restaurants were great experiences and I would recommend you visit each of them, but if I only had to choose one to dine again, it would be Hook Seafood, no doubt about it. Just listen to what my family had to say. So far, Hook Seafood gets a big, big thumb. Definitely a 10 out of 10. And definitely something you want to reserve. Book it. What do you guys think? Right, look at that mac and cheese. That's, that's let's see, like cheese. This, this is a lobster mac and cheese. Lobster mac and cheese? This is, tastes like my grandmother's mac and cheese. Oh, wow. But without the lobster because you couldn't afford the lobster. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Would you recommend? I recommend it. How about you, mom? Would you recommend? I do. Sure. Let's see what you're working with. I see nothing but carcasses over here. <laughs> And Marcy, how is it? It's delicious, but I've had too much and I just can't take it anymore. I'm gonna have to explore. Exactly, that's a good problem to have. After each meal, we were absolutely stuffed, so we went back to our balcony stateroom to change for the evening. You'll get a full in-depth review of our balcony stateroom and how we actually upgraded from an interior room after we booked our tickets. That's coming soon. But if you found this specialty dining review helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Our Mediterranean cruise was based in Barcelona, Spain, so if you want to see what we did in Barcelona before the cruise, as well as what it's like on board the Wonder of the Seas and dining at the other restaurants, as well as what it's like stopping at the port in Spain, France, and Italy? Check my Planning a Mediterranean Cruise playlist after this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to plan well, have fun, travel the world, and I'll catch you in the next video.